my general post Esri UC summary of things that happened at the UC response for pretty much every year. It goes like this. Meh. 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 Ooh. Meh. 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 Whoa. Meh. One of the wow things for me from the Ezra conference this year was an ArcGIS Online. You can take a file from your desktop and drop it in the browser and it'll root through your file and find something geographic and fling it on a map for you. And that is cool. That is really cool. It's it's a niche. I mean, I, I, I can't think of any reason why I'd actually want to do that. But it's just because something's niche doesn't mean it's not cool. I mean, you've seen segways. So of course I had to try and figure out how one could do this. Um, I started looking at the HTML5 file API and it turned out to be pretty easy. So I thought I'd go over really quick how one might do that. Should you be in one of those niche situations where you might actually want to. So let's take a look at the code. I'm going to be using Komodo Edit for this, but you can use anything you want. You can use Notepad. This is just HTML and JavaScript. Just laid out a simple HTML5 page, uh, basically a wrapper with a few elements in it. Now that will look, uh, you know, unimpressive. Let's style that up a bit. Uh, I'm going to make a some divs here, we're going to space them out, give them some borders, uh, center it up, just make it pretty. And I'm going to be pasting a lot of this code for two reasons. No one's to save time, and two, no one wants to see me type code. So I cannot type legible code and talk at the same time. So basically, we're just giving the divs a border radius and some margin on the bottom to space them out, and some padding on the inside for the content. We're centering up our wrapper with about 600 pix max width. And I set, like to set a max width instead of a width. That way it will go to that max size, unless they shrink their browser down very small, and then it can actually shrink. Whereas if you just set a width, it, you'll get scrolling. Now the dropper, which is where we're going to drop files, which is this div right here, I just gave it a light gray color, and five pixel border, and a big light gray font size. File info is where we're going to put information about the file and file data is where we'll put the actual contents of the file after we parse it. So that's basically it. See what that looks like. Much, much nicer. You've got a big drop area. File info and file data. That's basically all we need for our page. Now I'm going to put in, we're ready to do JavaScript now, so I'm going to put in a link to the jQuery CDN on Google, as well as our own script file. Now uh, the best place to put JavaScript is at the bottom of your page because they are page loading blockers, unless it's something like Modernizer where it has to go on the top. So over on our script, document ready is the jQuery's equivalent of I'm not quite there yet, but you can probably safely run stuff, and that's usually the case. Now I've read that if you use a jQuery, use jQuery to bind to the events of the object for the file API, you can get weird stuff going on. So I just skip that. We're just doing straight HTML. Dropbox is our dropper area right here. We're getting that element and we're adding an event listener for drag over and event listener for drop. If what happens, like we haven't refreshed this page yet, what a browser normally does when you drag a file onto it is to try to open it like that. That's not what we want to see happen. So we're adding event listeners for something you drag a file over and when you drop it. Now for drag over, we're setting this event, stop, stop propagating that event or any subsequent events after that, 
and don't do the default action for that event. We set that for both. So now, if we drag a file over, you get nothing, which is what we want. Now for the drop, this is where we are going to start handling uh, the event. We're going to start looking at the file with the file API. So we'll get the event. It will have a data transfer uh, method and we're going to get the files. We're basically getting an array of any files that were drug onto that object. And you can drag more than one, you can drop a whole folder on it. So we're going to get that array. Now we'll make sure that a file is actually there. So we'll just check the length of that array. If it's greater than zero, we're going to have to call a new function to handle that. Handle files, files. So now we basically said if a file was actually successfully dropped on that sucker, we're going to go to this other function. So I'm going to paste that on here. There's our handle files function. Let me tell you what it's doing. We're going to, since you can drop more than one file, you could actually loop through those and process every single one. We're going to keep it simple. We're just going to get the first file in that array if more than one was dropped. If it was just one, it's still going to be the first one. Now, there's a couple things you can do besides just parsing it. Uh, what we're going to do here is just take a look at the file itself. You can get the file name and type and the last modified date and some other information. Now, this is where you could uh, move this file to different handlers based on the type of file that was dropped. For example, if it's a text file, you might want to process it one way. If it was an image, you might want to process it a different way. So you can check that with the file type. So we got, uh, we're not quite ready for the reader yet. So we're getting all that and we're just going to put that in our file info window. So refresh this again, drag our file over. We'll see we dragged over file, plain text, 106 bytes, last modified, yada, yada, yada. So there's our file. Well, now let's process it. And we're going to do that with the file reader object, which is part of the file API. Hopefully I'm getting all this terminology right. Anyone that has read my blog will know I am not a stickler for English. Anyway, here's our reader object. Now, one of the events for the reader is on load in. That's is after I've gotten the file and processed it, process the whole thing is uploaded and ready to go, then go perform a function. There are other events. You can tie a progress meter if you think you're going to get big files. So every time it gets more information, you can increment that progress meter along, things like that. But let's just keep it simple. When the load end, load ends, we're going to fire this event. And this line basically says we're going to interpret what's coming in this file as text. And here's where you could use that file type to have it interpret the file in different ways. That's basically it. We're reading a file. We're ready to handle the results. So let me paste in that function. Now you can get really slick and creative here. Uh, I am not a really slick and creative guy. This is just a simple example. Now when you read the file in, it reads an entire file as basically one blob of text. So you're not getting line breaks or anything like that. So what I'm going to do here is this first line, and this is just a bit of regular expression garbage, just to make sure it's utterly unreadable to anybody that has to edit this in the future. We're basically looking for carriage returns and splitting that return into an array based on those carriage returns. So every line of that text file becomes a, a separate element in that array setting up another array for coordinates. Let me show you what this file looks like. It's basically 
some garbage with some coordinates hidden in it and then some more garbage and all we really care about is coordinates now you could do a lot of funky stuff here you could uh, check what we're going to do with here is just make if there's we're going to split it based on commas so I assume there's a comma between the coordinates and there has to be two elements and if they're numbers we're going to assume they're coordinates you could check to make sure the numbers are within the extent of the world and what projection you're using you could do commas or spaces you could do in different parts of the line you could do all kinds of crazy text processing here to snatch out coordinates from a, a text file uh, we're not going to do that here so we've got a new array we're going to go through every line of that file and we're going to split it wherever there's a comma so when you see it's going to read this line is an element in that array and it's going to split it because there's a comma there now what we're going to do is if that line has more than one element in it, in other words there had to have been a comma, and the first uh, element is a number and the second element is a number, we're going to assume that's a coordinate. So we're going to read that into our coordinates array. We're going to clear out our file data div and then we're going to loop through, this each is a, a handy jQuery looping thing. Uh, and append those coordinates to our file. So let's save that. Everyone cross your fingers. We're going to drag the file over, drop it. There's our text file. There's our, those are the coordinates for that file. And that's all you need. Now if you're doing any kind of you know mapping, you can, you've got Google Maps or Open Layers, whatever, you can take those coordinates and plop them right on the map. So we've taken a text file with junk in it and some coordinates, drug it onto a page, process the file with HTML5 file reader, and Bob's your uncle, there's the coordinates from it, you can throw them right on a map. I don't know if that's how Esri's doing it, probably not, um, but that's how I would do it if I ever found a need to do something like this, which again, I just can't think of why I'd want to but it's a niche kind of thing but it's cool now i should say this will work in google chrome and firefox and opera and safari internet explorer including version 9 does not support the file api so internet explorer 10 preview 2 from what i understand supports it so when ie 10 comes out it'll support the file api right now it doesn't so in this case probably use moderni modernizer or something to detect it and just hide that if they don't have that ability. So for most browsers it'll work, IE can suck it. So that's it. That's how I would do a drag and drop file upload parse for coordinates kind of thing. Uh, it's really cool what Esri did there. Doing it in an HTML5 way is actually pretty simple and straightforward. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next month. Side note, for those that might be concerned about the Gandhi poster that used to be about floating behind my head, so you just see his giant ears, um, it's still here. It's just on a different wall. I was just rearranging some stuff. So, I did not toss out Mr. Gandhi. That would be mean, you know, after they shot him.